Previously last week on Cock Die, the investigators set out through the blazing desert heat and arrived at a lavish, the lavish Mina Hotel perched on a rocky outcrop above the dunes. You contacted Von Wilhelm, John Wilhelm Von Hellebelen, that, that, who led you to the Clive expedition of the Mycernaeus Pyramid, where you, uh, Dr. Bain, um, giving the letter over to um, Eugene Clyde, succeeded um, in taking over control of the dig uh, to the doctor per the instructions of the yeah. Penhue Foundation. With Agatha Broadmoor and John Gardner assigned to assist you and the team, uh, you all crawled through the broken and collapsed passageways, up rickety handmade ladders to a sequestered chamber towards the top of the pyramid. Hidden in a plain room, the secret chamber in which the missing sarcophagus disappeared from offered little clues to its origin or the method of its disappearance. Until now, After the others had given up and left, you found a crack leading into a vertical shaft descending straight down to utter blackness below the pyramid. And then it got weird. As we come back to the players as they creep through these odd tunnels, Let's go ahead and do some housekeeping. 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 <laughs> I believe someone is reading a book. I was, I was reading a book at one point. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I had time. Who, who, who is reading Selections de Livre de Ivan? It is a French commentary on Latin, original by Gaspar Par de Nord, circa 13th century. You read French, right? Sure. Yeah, it's like a second language to me. Of course, I grew up in France. My parents vacationed in the summer villas on the French countryside. Ooh, that's wet. I like that. That's that's a good squelcher. I do not like that, and I would prefer I'm you did turn not. That down. For all the misophoniacs out there, I'll go ahead and turn that little down. <laughs> Supposedly copied by Denord from the earlier Greek manuscript. It's a very rare book, only 13 of them, blah, 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 blah. So you're right, this is going to take 36 weeks to read. 36 weeks? Mm-hmm. I probably need to go back to grade school. Fair enough. But with your travel time, just in the trolleys here and there, picking up an hour oh. there, here, and uh, of course the boat ride took you guys a good week or two. Wait, from England to Egypt? Yeah. Eh, maybe a week. But I'll say you're about a third of the way through this thing. You see that this book mostly focuses on a deity called Sasagoa. Who was in the previous campaign, as uh, Dr. Bain might notice that name, but you, unfortunately, are not sure who that is. Never heard of him? Never heard of him. However, you look in the border illustrations and you notice a lot of notes that look suspiciously like inverted unks that are broken. 
Go ahead and add three percentiles to your Cthulhu Mythos rating. All right. I, I, I'm going to drop and come back and say either your audio is bad or my audio is bad. I heard three percent. Oh, go ahead. Mythos. It is eight percent. Eight, Ocho. So eight percent, like as in like I have five, so that would be basically zero. Ah, da, da. So if you have five percentile in Cthulhu Mythos currently, I'm going to have you add eight for a total of 13. All right, that's a percentage. My bad. Thank you. All right, got it. You're good. You're good. Wow, I'm really learning that Cthulhu stuff. I'll be right back. Q. Damn, I'm bad. All right, I'm going to give you a third of the spells that you have picked up in the beginning portion of this book here. I'm going to give you two spells. You got, you ready? You got these? Yep. Call and dismiss the blind lord of chaos. Okay. And in parentheses put Azathoth. Got it. And for your second spell, uh, pull, go ahead and put contact formless spawn of Zothoth Qua. <laughs> Two Qs in a row here. Qua. Okay. All right, those are the spells that you pick up for now. All right, I'm going to go look it up. I'll give you one more. Go ahead and take Create Barrier of Natith. And I'll put in the Discord how that spelled. Perfect, thank you. That's enough here. Yow's keeping for now, so you guys continue down the pyramid through the tunnels. At this point, with Dr. Bane separated momentarily from the party, and you also see that through the darkness, you try and stick together, but it's difficult, and you lose track of each other, each one of your party disappearing into the shadows and then reappearing at different distances within the party and then around corners not to be seen at all and you guys pass six hours this way chasing down dead ends clocks are off too each one of your stopwatches you compare and notice that the time is reading differently on each however all of your feet are starting to hurt Um, how much of the underground caves have we explored? It's really hard for you to tell at this point. Because of the time that has passed, you're starting to get tired. You would say at this point, you've gone at least two miles, but it could be more. And none of it is repeating? You're trying to map it out. I believe that some of you are trying to to categorize, to cartographer, cartographize, to make a map. Am I correct? Yep. Yeah.
you would see that the path is winding back and forth in on itself. You're getting around another bend in the path, which you realize you are doubling back and continuing in a... The path that you are traveling on, and you're taking a rough estimate, feeling like Lewis and Clark, you got the... What's the thing that draws circles? Compass? No, no, the compass is a thing that spins and points directions with magnets, which I don't believe in magnetism, that's just some devil magic. Oh, let's see. No, it's the, um, it has like a, a point and then another pencil on the other end and you can adjust the angle so you can draw a perfect circle. Right, compass. Is that what they're called? Yeah. Dr. Bane has one of those and a square. She's making a really well done map, and you figure you're heading in a northeasterly direction. Alright, so are we together or were we separated? At this point, you have come back together. Okay. And I'll say that the party. Doctor Who? Francis, and uh, as well as Little Horace, you all are together, and you see Dr. Bane just around disappearing in the next corner. Okay. Well, I think we would go and explore, because we have nothing for... I mean, I'm blue right now, so it's all good. <laughs> You are still blue, luminescent from the moss that you tripped up a little bit in. Yeah. I'll go find... I want to go find uh, Dr. Van. I, I, I'll, we'll keep up. You, I'll, stepping I'll in front of the rest, guiding your companions as it seems they are a little out of it, but seeing you continue after Dr. Bane, they follow your footsteps. Oh god, why is there squelching? I like the squelching. Oh, God. Squelching kind of sounds, you know, friendly. <laughs> you look over and you see a pool of blood in the ceiling and then a long stalactite. And as you get closer, it is undulating blood dripping down from the ceiling and then pooling on the ground. And that's the sound. It's like a tentacle? No, no, it's like a little, uh, it's like a blood waterfall, but the blood is really thick. Awesome. As you guys motor on board, I'm going to need one of you to roll a D10, please. Uh, horse? Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, good. Or is it? Say, as you guys see this straightaway look down, you notice three passageways branching off the main passageway before it arcs around the corner to the right. Uh, I'm not going near the fucking tentacle, uh, and I'm turning my flashlight on. <laughs> good precautions, I like that, that sounds good, wise move. You guys move around the slick, wet stone. You do not notice the source for the blood, but you put that out of your mind, continuing down the passageway. You overhear these voices again in Arabic, whispering about intruders close by, and then they'll hurry down a passage away from you all. They have been intruders for hours at this point. I don't know what they think they're doing. All right. Gosh, these guys are terrible at their jobs. Truly. Uh, don't you have some poison you could throw at them or something? Like, uh... Well, yeah, but that I would rather not waste it. If we can just sneak around or whatever, that's cool. 
I'm okay with sneaking. We'll just drag Doctor Who and Frank behind us since they've gone unconscious. Oh, uh, yeah. They're probably from feet. Probably the alcohol. You two look behind you. Doctor Who and Francis are no longer there. Ouch. Oh, no, they've been eaten by the tentacle. How unfortunate. Uh, but we must persevere. As you say tentacle, you look down one of these passageways that you walk by, and you do see something in the shadow, huge, looming in the darkness, a math of rising shadows. I don't know. I feel pretty empowered by the fact that I'm blue. Not worried about that. Also, I can see in the dark now. A little bit of your blue. How are we not being noticed, given that one of us is glowing in blue? I thought you guys wrapped that up. Am I wrong? I thought you wrapped it up. Yeah. No, you said we were still blue. You are still blue from the, the moss stuff. However, I thought like, oh crap, I'm shiny. I'll just put on like my mittens and I'll put my, okay, put my hat on. Oh, yes, the mittens. That changes everything. Nothing says my comfort like <laughs> mittens in Egypt. All good. Ready to face down endless horrors. I got my mittens. Okay, so we're following, or I'm just tracking Doctor Bain. I'm just gonna do what she, what he's doing. Since he knew, it seems to know better most of the time. Doctor Bain. Yes. Since you are in the lead here, you come around this corner and you see uh, two men holding torches disappear down the side yeah. tunnel. The uh, level of activity seems to be raised a little bit, and they are looking for someone. I'm going to need a stealth check from you, as well as Little Horst, as you stop him as you come around the corner, waiting for a moment as these two pass with their torches and disappear down one of these side tunnels. How about I just don't roll anymore? It's too late. My brother, they're here somewhere. Let's look down this pass. Wait. <laughs> what is that blue light coming off the wall over there in the shape of a man? Why is there a perfect outline of a person of the blue luminous map? Son of a bitch! Get him! And uh, two guys with uh, unsheathed scimitars come racing down the hallway at you. Uh, well, I have a gun that I can... Oh, thank God. Uh, can I shoot? Hey, what's up, guys? Save us. Save us? What the fuck did you do this time? I just followed what other people said to do. I didn't do anything. This is not about me. This is about other people. And their... And their love... I I have no opinion on any of those. Okay, sure. That sounds so like you. Blaming others for your mistakes. Probably. I feel like both of you failed that stealth check. Okay, so what's happening? Being murdered. Are they log in? Yeah, S murdered? Yeah, you guys were right? seen crossing through the underground tunnels beneath the pyramids <laughs> by guards, and now it's a fight. Mm. <clears throat> it's a fight. fight. Mm, dude. Oh. Uh, We're being chased by Arabs who sound exactly like Bill Hicks. Bill Hicks. Comedian. <laughs> oh my god, that what is do you uh... mean, No, we get it. <clears throat> There's cameras in the walls. Okay. So, are we? So we're in. A, we're running from a fight. Or in the fight right now. I am looking for the dexterity scores of these cultists. Um, but since Doctor Who is in a half serpent abomination with a dexterity of over a hundred, I'm assuming he's going first. Way to just no, I'm 
walk right into combat, sir. Hey, what's going on? Oh my god, my friends are being attacked. How about they? I'm gonna, right away, I'm gonna do the spell, uh, Flesh Ward. It's 1d6 for magic dam uh, damage, or magic points. How many magic so points are you spending? I'm gonna use, spend, I have 12, I'm gonna spend 3, so that's 3d, uh, 3d, uh, Yep, three, roll 3d6. All right, you have a magical barrier of 13 health points that shimmers before you. Right. And I'm going <clears throat> to take out my shotgun. And all right. And then I'm going to rest it on a ledge. It's like something to help me keep it straight. And I'm gonna fire at the nearest uh, cultist. Give me a pew pew roll. Pew pew. Pew pew, motherfucker. Do I get an advantage since I'm resting it and help up it in it down? I'll give you advantage for this first shot because uh, you, having been separated from the party, see these two cultists running at your friends and just pop out from front behind your fellow investigators and just whiz some bullets over their shoulders. All right. Why'd you shoot twice? I got advantage to uh, shoot twice. Nah. Yeah. Don't, don't you guys have the ability to roll with advantage? Uh, yeah, up there at the top, yeah. you have... Oh, wait, that's roll options. I wonder how you roll with advantage in this game. Yeah, I don't know. Mr. Edit, extreme ver verbals. And yeah, that would verbals, be the verbals, difficulty okay. of it, but how would you... Okay. <clears throat> Do I no. right it? I bet it's a, a setting that I'm fucking up. I'll I'll YouTube that later. Rolling twice will oh. definitely advantage you all. Alright, hard success. That's gonna hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Oh, I gotta try wait, wait, and dodge that. Oh, it doesn't do damage. Uh <coughs> Is it? Ah, lol, let's be spell checking Pharaoh. Oh, huge D12. There we go. Steroid of 80. I succeeded, but against your hard success, that is going to be a failure. B what? 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 2D12? Excuse me, sir. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 2D12. A shotgun is 2D12. 2D6. Yeah. That better be 2D6. No, 2D6. It's 2D12. No, it's 2d12. Pop gate shotgun 2d12. Oh, okay, okay. Let me just grab the cool okay, robot, yeah. alright? They're not 2d12. I know, 12, 12 is right. I think that's right. Because mm. the shotgun I have is. Yeah, I, I especially chose oh. this one because it was the higher damage. Okay. No, no, okay. no, we got the appendices right here. Well, we'll go ahead and fucking use it, Mr. 2d12, motherfucker. <laughs> No, baby. Kill. Hey, at least I got one and then a 12. So, two 12. Look, you rolled a, yeah, a 1 and a 12. That is a spread. Nice, but this guy has 11 health, and I feel like you should just be able to shoot his face off. Hold on. Oh, well, that makes things easy for me. We got bull whip damage. 1d3 plus half of base damage. Okay, good, good. Assault rifles, submachine guns, machine guns. Shotguns. What is your shotgun? It's uh, 12 wait. gauge? It's, yeah, 12 gauge shotgun. 12 gauge shotgun, pump, semi auto. All right, so we have different damages for different ranges. The damage dice mm -hmm. is going to be a d6. Mm -hmm. And go ahead and so. put down the following distinctions. At 10 yards, it's going to be 4d6. At 20 yards, it's going to be 2d6. And then at 50 yards, it's going to be 1d6. 
So, ah, oh, sorry, I got it wrong on two D six. You telling me that? Yeah, that's. Am I wrong? It doesn't look like uh, anything has a D twelve except for a tank gun, which yeah, is okay, a twelve D ten. So it's a one D six. Uh, it depends on the two, range. Two, two. 10 yards, inside of 10 yards okay. is going to be 4d6, 20 yards, 2d6, and then 50 yards is going to be 1d6. Alright, how many yards are they? Running at your friends, they're having discovered them, trying to charge in at them with scimitars. Actually, no, no, I'm sorry. These guys are wielding clubs with a nasty spike at the head of it. Mm-hmm. Trying to get into melee They're range. Really close, Call it about 20 yards away. Um, yeah, you're still at medium range. You're not inside 10 feet quite yet. So it's, 12, it's 40 feet. Yards. So, so it's that, 40 feet or what? So mid range is going to be 2d6. Okay. <clears throat> 2d6. Can I just do 1d12? <laughs> 1d12 will Eight consistently damage. roll lower damage than 2d6. 2d6 rolls higher damage. I know, that's why I didn't do it. I didn't do it. What about right, that? I did <clears throat> that was alright without my pencil. Alright, I've got the You're damage. Shocking. Dr. Bane and Little Horse, please give me your dexterity scores. Uh, 60. 65. And we do have a cultist with a dexterity of 80, a strapping young man who is going to do a JoJo pose and then attack you with his scimitar. He is going to circle around Dr. Bane of Little Horse for Dr. Who, who just shot at him. And hit him. In the face. This is the person you did hit in the face. Yep. He didn't look good. He is going to try and swing with his club to hit you. What are you doing? I'm going to take the damage so I can get advantage as shooting in the face. All right, go ahead and shoot him. Yeah, so he's going to try and smash you with his club as you try and blast him again with your shoddy. Yep. Oh, hell yeah. Well, yep. Extreme. As you, uh... Yep, as he tries to smash your face, you point blank shoot him in the face, and that's going to blow his head brains all over the side of the passageway. Uh, I laugh. <laughs> Next. Dr. Payne, as this guy gets his head mystified, it is your turn. Uh, is it even a threat anymore? Just there was one more cultist that just saw his friend get decapitated via shotgun and is starting to turn and run and scream. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm also <laughs> laughing uh, like, like a crazy man. Yep, yep. Oh. And continue down the path. <laughs> All right, I'll say at your walking speed, you just walk right around this cultist and get on the other side of him. No problem. So he will pass you by. Would you like to ready in action or anything like that? Uh, if he attempts to harm me, I'm gonna hit him with the poison. Which poison are you preparing? I'm going to prepare the stun. I think it's from the freaking blast. Of... Yeah. All right. You ready the action to poison him with the stunning poison? Understood. 
little horse, uh, seeing Doctor Who just paste someone's head over your shoulder, and then Doctor Bane continue like nothing happened. What do you do? How far away is the nearest cultist? From you, about Four twenty-five uh, yards. Twenty-five yards. Yeah. You guys are looking down the passageway. Well, we're not subtle anymore, so I'll fire my shotgun at him. And I miss. Wait, where is he aiming at? I was aiming at the nearest cultist. Yeah, I know, but where is the nearest cultist? He, he came he said, in front of me or in front of her? He said 25 yards down. Yeah. Ask Dr. Van. All right, you shoot over his shoulder. It's that damn bioluminescent, bioluminescent glint in your eye. It's fucking your shot now. Would you like to do anything with your movement, little horse? Yeah, run in the oh, run straight at the cultist. I'll say you're able to catch up to Dr. Bane at this point, um, if you'd like to, and position yourself on the other side of this cultist. Uh, sure, I'll do that. All right, so Dr. Bane, Little Horst, you guys are down the hall between this cultist and where he's trying to run and Dr. Who, who's just turned his buddy into paste. I'm not so confident in the mental health of Doctor Who. I'd, I'd rather not be around that right now. Out of the splash zone. Wise positioning. He is going to try and... <laughs> yeah, almost Spider-Man no, walking. Who has a lot of oh, no. He doesn't want to answer your questions, Doctor Who. Uh, he is going to... Just like hug the side of the wall around you guys and then sprint forward. And do you guys see him disappear around this corner? Oh, so I can't see him? Unfortunately, he just got out of range. Can I, uh, like when he, when he like runs, because I did a good shot, can I shoot the rock? Like right where he turns, so he knows that he almost died at least. It's a really good shot. So I'm gonna say he is just about to turn this corner. You have a line of shot, and you take the shot. Let's see if he dodges. This was the cultist with a dexterity of 50. You already killed the one with 80. Yep. He succeeds in dodging against your success of a rifle gun shot. You <laughs> hear the ricochet well, of the shot off the stone wall. <clears throat> That's more of that word that I came from, you son of a bitch. He is down this passageway. So, Dr. Bane, what you see, and I'll say you guys are now out of combat, is this cultist book it for all of his life down the passageway and then taking the first right available to him, branching down one of these side passageways, ducks into one of those and just... You could just hear the pounding of footsteps echoing off these hollow halls. Can I take the body of the, the cultist on the ground? See if he has anything on him other than the club. Oh, uh, sure. What were you gonna say, Doctor Ben? Can I follow the guy who's running away? How closely are you trying to follow him? Are you trying to sneak up on him, or are you trying to um, run him down? Not down, just a, a decent enough distance to where I don't lose track of him. All right. I tossed her. I tossed in a. a, a a, uh, some chalk to uh, draw on the wall, like he's a sheepfold. 
Dr. Bang, you get, get some ta you get some chalk tossed to you as we're marking the walls so you don't lose your way and you continue down this hallway. Yeah. Who's going with Dr. Bane? You're watching as uh, as he sets off on one of these side passageways. Or check the body for keep following. Yeah, uh, you can follow. I'll be right back. Well, I'll be right behind you. I'm gonna check the body for. Doctor Who, you find that this cultist is almost nude beneath his robes. All he has is a club with this weird. It's a piece of metal, but it's not a nail. It's more like a railroad spike pierced through the top of it. Hmm. I'm gonna take the ropes off them. I'm gonna put the rope on myself. Cover I like over it. my clothes. You don the rope. Put the hood on and then and then walk for his direction. Placing the robe on, hood up. You take off a piece of jewelry from the deceased man. Only other thing is wearing. A crudely cut onk that has been held upside down, inverted. Can I examine it? See if I recognize it. Uh, um, either it would be Nispo's or Venice. Some, some Cthulhu Nispo? And as you look down at this inverted onk, running forward to catch up with your friends. <laughs> just up ahead of you, you just were so close to them, where'd they go? Picking up your pace, starting to breathe hard. You can see their wait, torchlight wait, the faintly in front of you. Walls. I'm not following them, I'm following the top. Where we're gonna leave Doctor Who for a moment. Little horses and Doctor Bane. <laughs> Still the wow. What's that? Uh, I was gonna nudge Doctor Bane to start drawing a line on the wall so that Doctor Who can catch Cub. I'm gonna have that. <laughs> Dr. Bane puts an arrow going the wrong way, and you guys continue forward. <laughs> That's green. <laughs> and at this point, you notice that the person you're tailing, it's easy now. It's like he's nervous. He's not thinking clearly. He's giving himself away, breathing heavy, erratic, bouncing off the both sides of the wall. He stumbles down the passageway. You feel a little bit safer, closing the distance between you and him. He seems oblivious to your presence and his surroundings. And then a violent blast of wind rushes through, extinguishing all unshielded candles and any loose papers that you're carrying get carried away down the hallway. <sighs> <clears throat> Everybody give me a dexterity check. Or, uh, excuse me, Little Horst and Dr. Bane. Oof. Little horse, you're able to brace yourself and kind of get low and squat. However, Dr. Bane, you get blown over and fall down. Catch you have the you have enough to carry the catcher. Wait, me catcher? Him? Him, yeah. Yeah, that horse will try and, and and grab Dr. Van. Oh, why's that? Uh, to stop her from falling, him from falling. Okay, yeah, I see. You'll see. Um, with that gust of wind, you break. Ideas. No, of course. Yeah, you see Dr. Van going down. You're able to catch him by the shoulder and prop him up. Sweet. Dusting yourselves off. Got kind of brushing off that dust from your hat, shaking out the hat. You guys press on. And you've noticed that the person you're tailing has stopped moving.
Is he facing our direction? Catching a glance around the corner. Glance. A glimpse around the corner, you see that he is looking at the wall. Standing closely, maybe a few inches from his face. He's looking at the wall, head slightly tilted down. Oh, is this the, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Blair Wicking? Is it Blair Wicking? Uh, is he still aware that we're here, does it look like? Or is he, is he, thought he outran us? Out. He is not aware of his surroundings. You can tell him that much. It's like he's almost forgotten he was running from something. What was your question, Dr. Bain? Late blarp. Late blarp. Does he look lost? I think he says. Ah, look lost. Uh, milk, oh, okay. your internet's very late. You're probably early here with you. So, you would say that he looks lost, but unconcerned. It's clear he doesn't know where he is, but he doesn't seem worried about it. Get you guys on the right part of the map. At this point, you guys have come down this branching tunnel. We should wait for Doctor Who to catch up. You guys have waited long enough. This guy has not moved. He continues to stare at the wall as Doctor Who stealthily approaches. Hey, what's up? And we got this, this, this guy here staring at a wall. It's like oh, he's. Excellent. Uh, I look around. And I was like, you know what? I'm I'm in, I'm fully geared out for a few minutes. I guess. Be right back. And I'm gonna walk up to him slowly, and carefully. He fully doesn't acknowledge talk. your presence. He continues to stare at the wall. Hmm. I look. I I look at the wall for a second with just a quick glance, just in case. There's something wrong with the wall. What up with this wall? What up with the wall? Is it special about the wall? Is there markings on it? Give us about it, Jack. Alright. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah. We're not next to the. Oh, shoot. Hey, nice. it's green. Nice. What was your question, little horse? Never mind. Never mind. I'd say that you and Dr. Vane are looking on as Dr. Who approaches quietly, creeping towards this gentleman, looking over past this guy as he continues to stare at the wall right in front of his face. Dr. Who sees claw marks, some kind of giant hand with wretched sharp fingers tore this passage from the rock. <coughs> you do this? Ah, uh, hmm, hmm. Uh, I, I look behind me to see if there's more marks like that on all the, all the walls, or is it just this? Continuing to look around, you see that there is an organic nature to these walls. Some of the parts have been carved out by a clawed hand. Some parts look like they are eaten away by acid, some kind of chemical. Oh, that's probably one of the big ones again. Um, I look at him and I was like, you know what does the thing do with this? I'm gonna act like I know what it is, not really. Yeah. You ask him? Yeah. Did it do it? 
He does not respond to you. Well, I take out my, uh, I look into my bag and take out a syringe of speaking, uh, of speaking medicine. Got and some then, morphine uh, in a syringe? Him, sure. I'm gonna stick it into him and then I'll go to sleep. Just the sleepy dose? Yeah, the sleepy dose. Yeah, he thump. Oh. Uh, and I take off his clothes. And I was like, and I uh, go to my uh, colleagues and I was like, um, I don't think he sees me. He doesn't know anything. He's not responding. Let's get out of here. And I'm going to look for a path that looks like it's more tribal. Well, I still have the extreme success. I see if there's like other like footprints or in, in the near the area. It looks like like people were using frequent frequently. With your high success, you're able to find the passageway with the most foot traffic, and it, it was the corridor that you were previously traveling down. You see right, that the footprints. Oh, okay, sorry, go for it. You see footprints in the dust. And while all of these side passages look like they have long stretches of time to where people go down them untraveled, this main passage seems to have regular traffic. All right, I'm like, uh, well, let's go this way. And I point, I'm like, this seems to have the most traffic, the traffic over here. This guy, I, I. I just don't care. Uh, who wants to look like a cultist and not be, uh, you know, uh, so, um, yeah. Vicuous? Yeah. No I would like to dress, okay. if you're, you know what, if Doctor Who is dressed as a cultist, I will also dress like a cultist. I think uh, we're both blue work. anyway, so we kind of blend. Thinking it might be wise to get some kind of disguise going, you double back uh, to that zonked out cultist and disrobe him and don the robes he was wearing. Great idea. Nice. He, uh, he doesn't we'll seem to use, protest. We'll, we'll treat um, Bane as like a captured prisoner. And you guys. Yeah, great idea. Bane is like Chewbacca. I make sure he picks up the the needle axe club thing to look like, look the part. You guys travel a little bit more down the main passageway and feel the vastness of an expanse open up before you. Everywhere around you is dark. But somehow you can feel an immense space opening up before you. Crouching back into the corridor that you were traveling down, you suddenly feel uneasy. This is obviously the main place that a lot of this people, a lot of this traffic is coming towards. You can't hide inside of this corridor forever, but you're not sure what's inside of this massive space. I have a feeling I know what it is, though. I hope it's not. <clears throat> Dr. Bane? I hope it's not what I think. Yep. There's a lot of corpses around this part of the corridor as you get close to this... this upcoming corner here. Looks like is a lot of them have been like, dead for a while. Just dust and skeletons. However, if you would like a cultist robe, there is one available that's clean enough. Are they all um, are they all uh, all the dead people? Are they all cultists? Or are they just, are there anybody that's like in normal clothes? Or just like someone who was kidnapped or something like that and sacrificed down here? You do all notice. people who are wearing robes? There are two odd things. You do notice that there is a combination of both people who are cultists that seem to be dead 
as well as normal clothed people. So it's a, it's a, like even mix or mostly people from who's captured and sacrificed. You'd say ninety ten cultists. It's mostly dead cultists in here. You also yeah. notice that there are, well, there's no blood. This is all bone. So the blood was drained beforehand or whatever it is, it sucks out the blood? Hard to say, but as you get closer towards this entrance, the piles, bah, they just pile up with bodies. They grow taller. Is there any fresh, like, let's take a fresh part? Everything is bones and dusty, dry. Mm. Can I see, uh, can I examine the bones and, like, use a medicine check to see how old these bones are? Like, Absolutely. How, how long ago? Dr. Bane, are you going to be trying to disguise yourself? Yep. Got it. You grab a rope, down it, inverted onk. Look good. It uh, looks, um, it's a, a good job of stealthy. You did a good disguise job. Looks as good as any of the companions. With that medicine roll, Dr. Who. You notice that the bones and the bodies towards the door are more complete. You see full amounts, full sets of teeth, lower jaws, some of the fingers that deteriorate more quickly, all present and accounted for. And at this point, you guys are almost at the threshold to this giant room, and the bodies are piled up all the way towards the ceiling, like they've been stuffed through and out the door. Is there any, um, spike marks through the head? Does it, does this show like a cause nope. of death? Nope. Mm. Uh, that's weird. <sighs> Alright. What do you all do? Maybe we have a time. What do you guys want to do? We can go through this way. So can we? It seems like there's a lot of bodies. Can we peek around the corner into the big, very large room that we found? Oh yes, I was hoping you would. (laughs) Yep. Okay, you do that. You check for us, okay? You look and then you come back. You don't stay. Look. Just look for a second. (laughs) You look. Come back to us, okay? I will go and take a quick look. You come back. Got it? And then immediately come back. Okay. Make sure you use that spot hidden check, too. All right. Uh, Doctor Who is heading back. Doctor Bane, what are you doing? Mm, I'll wait for a horse. All right. Doctor Bane, Doctor Who, the intelligent, educated people. Well, they didn't get a doctorate for no reason. Hanging back. Little horse. You look around the corner, timid. And you see nothing. There's just blackness in front of you. You feel the immensity of the space, but there is nothing that meets your eyes and goes into your eyeballs to your brain to let you know what's in there. And then your eyes adjust, and you see this blackness. Everything in there is dark, and you actually see no light sources emitting from anything. All you can feel is that this space is huge. From the main tunnel, wide steps lead a hundred feet down into the massive chamber. Only a few... A 
of the, uh, you see a few torches that cast off entirely too little light, which cast a lumen, a, sh- uh, a courtway through this dark space. Reflecting everywhere is gleam off these torches. The black marble casts a flicker of light. The floor is black marble flecked with white. The hall is approximately 400 by 500 feet, with the ceilings so vast they disappear up into nothingness. And as you continue to look, you see that the torch light casts a strange flickering glow off of the black marble on the ground, which undulates and moves, writhing under the light. You focus on it, looking closer, and you see that this is black liquid. Dark pools next to the black marble, extending the entire length of the hall up towards a pedestal in which two empty thrones sit. In front of these empty thrones is a large altar in which rests a large black sarcophagi. Well, Horst is scared shitless, so he's going to go back and report in now. And as you try and wrench your vision away, your eyes rest only for a moment on a large steel in the middle of the room, which begins to glow with iridescent colors. You see the entire rainbow in colors you've never even dared to imagine drift and shimmer before the surface breaks, widening in pure white to a slit that opens into a circle as hundreds of cultists stream through this steel into the black chamber. You see immediately some of them disappear into the shadows. Others fall directly into the pit and are swallowed by some writhing darkness and pulled under the water in hilarious ecstatic joy. Um, I'm gonna call out to Little Horse. Little Horse, can you come back now? You said quickly, yeah. not. Uh, you make a horse is scared, so he's he's heading back. Yeah, you come back, sweat and bullets. You make it back to your group, your friends. Yep. Uh, I think we found where we wanted to go, but hey. I don't know if we want to go there. Why are we in Egypt again? What are we doing here? I saw some black writhing mud oil shit. I don't think we should be here anymore. This doesn't seem like a good place for people like us. I don't want to be here. This is our job, I promise. This is our job? Please, let's get the fuck out of here. Did you know how to wait? Was there an exit on the other end? Did you see an exit? Uh, I saw terror. I saw bad things. No, I didn't see anything good. Okay, okay, okay. Um, well, there's a party thing. We can go back to, to try. We can try to go back the other way, but um, I, okay. So give me a second. I'm gonna go over there. You know, look. I'm gonna see if the if the 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 crown is in there. Interesting. And this. I'm gonna look for the crown. There were two. There's like a different tunnel. Two empty thrones. You can go and sit on thrones if you want. That's fine. I'm not gonna sit on the throne. I'm just gonna look inside and see if there's a crown and another path passageway. All right, go ahead. Give me a spot hidden check as you peer around this corner into this giant space of darkness. See if you can see. Take a sip of liquor to help me calm my nerves. That'll help focus the eyes. That's how that works. Exactly. It's there, Doctor Who. Perched on the head of this mummy, still bandaged, lying 
on the altar, you see her resting on her head a large golden ornate crown in addition to looking at her neck you see a necklace Uh is there any other exit other than in here yes there is I I was okay so this and I'm gonna go back to them and say how long they fall I'm gonna tell them what I was thinking. I was gonna, I was gonna blow up the entrance if there was no other way out, and close it in, so this place can stay closed off to, to the world, honestly. Um, but now that we know there's another entrance, we probably can go. We can try to go to the on the sides, try to sneak around to the right of us. I mean, the world, I guess, the left. If we look on the map. And we can like try to like sneak by, go down there. Where is the liquid at? Is the black stuff right there in the middle of the liquid? It's hard to see because of the blackness of the marble as well as the dim light inside this chamber. It's hard to tell where the floor is. These giant pools, and what's safe to walk on. Okay. Um. Oh, oh, I know what to do. Okay, okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna take out my uh, my sword, and I'm gonna use it to poke at the ground, like a blind man to, you know, and like checking my surround the floor to see what uh, solid ground and scary liquid. Um, we can try. To, we should try to get to that exit, and then maybe we blow up the e- the exit that exit right there instead and make them have to go all the way around the long way to get out. Maybe they'll get lost and eaten by the slime or whatever. I do not, I want to grab the, the the crown, but that thing scared the shit out of me, so I'm not doing that. Or we can take a risk and go back the other way. What do you, what do you guys think? Uh, Bane and Little Horse, what's your opinion? Uh... Why do you want this crown again? Because I feel like it's important that we have it and it doesn't. Okay. Uh, you know what? I could run in there and grab it to you for you if you if you promise that we'll leave. Well, I, I, that's what I'm saying. Like I want us to leave. And I see. I think that's an exit. And I'm thinking that we blow that exit there. At least they would have to go the long way around to like to, like chase us. Versus, we have to leave the the shirt the long way instead. So what I'm trying to say. So we have a, a safer way of ex- exiting. So I think before we try to steal from that the mummy, let's try to see if we can get to that exit first, and then and then decide on if we're going to take the the crown or not. Okay. So let's try to get out of here first. I so I like getting out. Okay. Bane, what's your idea? Do you want to go up or to that like corner right there? Like where the passageway is at? It might be a quick exit. Wait, so are we trying to leave? Because is that not the sarcophagus that this whole expedition was for? Yeah, but there's a high chance it's alive and it'll cut us in half. That's why I'm, I'm gaining everybody's opinion. I don't want to decide on what we're doing by myself. You know? I, I wish you had some, like something we could, like oil or something that we could throw in there and just set everything on fire. Well, we have um, some liquor, I guess. We got some olive oil. Yeah, we should just blow this stuff up. Alright, well. All I right. will say, uh, as you guys uh, discuss your options, out of the corner of your eye, Doctor Who, as you guys observe the what's going on, the proceedings inside of this chamber, Doctor Who, you with your amazingly drunk eyes. Thank you. You see two people pulled through the steel, Agatha Broadmore and John Gardner. 
Uh, They're uh, roughly pushed like forward <laughs> down onto their knees and then picked up roughly and then hauled through the chamber down towards the altar. At this point, you're watching uh, at least a thousand people in this vast chamber start to supplicate themselves, bow down in front of this altar and the two thrones. Oh, uh, I thought they, they were bring, killing themselves. I had no idea. That... They bring John Gardner and Agatha Broodmore directly in front of the mummy and turn them around, shoving them down roughly onto their knees with a crack. Okay, okay. I'm gonna watch intensely. Uh, our friends are getting gonna get killed. Ah, uh, oh, that's a shame. Um, well, if there's a bunch of people there, maybe we can, and we're disguised right now, we can, and we just make sure we keep our heads down and don't look towards them that much. Let's try to walk past it. We, we're not in our normal clothes right now. Uh, we are in our clothes, but they're underneath the road. I mean, we could just wander in there. Maybe they won't react to us. Just I do a lot would, of... Yeah. Do just a lot of... Them. Them now. And then we'll slowly get around them and go straight to the uh, exit. And then yeah. maybe... If we can get it, we can maybe try to get to the... Uh, the crown. Okay. We're just gonna kind of creep in. All right. Okay, and I'm gonna. Okay, the only. Okay, so I only have. One, oh no, that's too late. Okay, never. Mind. I will put a uh, five minute, uh, three minutes uh, fuse on the uh, dynamite I have left. Just one dynamite. And right. I'm gonna keep it in my pocket. And when it's time, I'm gonna put it where the entrance of the exit. And then I'm gonna light it. But that's right. like what I'm gonna do. I think I understand what you're trying to do. You get enough of a fuse on there to ensure your safe retreat and then blow it up before anyone, too many people, can chase you down, correct? Yep. All right, you go ahead and stuff one of your longer fuses in that dynamite. All right, and then we're going to slowly go in, and we're going to try to move towards to the other exit and try to be as inconspicuous as possible. It's at this point, you watch 50, 100 torches come from the chamber, which you have gotten here down, and another branching yeah. chamber. A flood yeah. of these cultists oh, stream through the tunnel you occupy, and you, without skipping a beat, put down your heads in supplication and proceed with the procession and flood into the chamber. Let's go ahead and get stealth yeah. checks from you all. And we're gonna segue right into break. Oh god. Oh. 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 Good. Good. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> like none of us have any stuff. All of us have plenty of stuff. <laughs> Correct. Dubs that. Well, I'm gonna try to keep my uh, as low as possible, and like as we're, I'm gonna just fall to the ground. Fuck it. And bow, and per, uh, like, and act like them. This would be a disadvantage for this guy, because you guys have cultist robes. A little better. Oh yeah, let's go ahead and take a five minute break as I figure out if those guys saw you or not. I hope not. Oh, I mean, they might have seen us, but they might. This guy has yeah. an intelligence of 30. That's it? Wow, that's pretty bad. He is actually the smartest cultist. His buddy has an intelligence of 15. Explains a lot. <laughs> That's why they're cultists and not priests. Yeah. Well, you guys are not the best at acting like cultists, but it, it's new. It's your first day on the job, and you guys are unnoticed. 
<laughs> Miraculously. I'll be right back and go throw out the trash and make that five minute break. Or less. Yep, I'll be back in five. Go, cool. five minute break. Yeah, let's take five. Sorry, I thought we were about to die horribly under this pyramid. Who was having a good time? Tell me now, your death will be less painful. Having a mildly okay time. I'm having a great time. I'm in. I'm in terror, and uh, you know, I'm blue, so that's good. And also, like, there's cultists who think that I'm one of them, which is it's always nice to belong. Doctor Bade, you're fine for now. I shall pass you over. Are you, however, little horse? <laughs> Dare you have a good time with cultists? Do you think this is a game? I mean... The irony. Why would you become a cultist if it wasn't fun? Like, just saying. Uh, these are the questions that keep us up at night. 
Hey, man, why'd you even join that call? It's not... Is that even fun? Yeah, it's like... You don't even like it. What's the big... Why bother? Man, they're not even letting you sh... Oh, God. <laughs> they're not even no, letting you take baths. <laughs> God, I... Um, I gotta remember. I think I was... Smoking a cigarette at a bar or outside of a comedy club. But there was a Scientologist and she was a cutie pie. And I was like, I was just like just standing there and passing by. And I heard one Scientologist talking to the other one. And she was like, yeah, they've cut down my shower time to three minutes. This is in, uh, this is in L.A. Yeah, this is somewhere in uh, downtown uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a big facility there. Yeah, I've driven by it. It's a fancy piece of real estate in the middle of uh, Los Angeles. Yep. Expensive. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, they don't pay property taxes because religion. True. Wait, is that true? I, I said that confidently, but I have no idea if that is a, what, why? Well, why am I talking about Scientology? That's a dumb cult. Let's start. Let's uh, turn our attention back to you Neil know, Thotap and give praise where it's due. Am I right, guys? All praise and glory to the crawling chaos. Oh, uh, the spells that, as long as we're on a break, so the, the, were you going to paste the spells somewhere? Oh uh, yeah, I'll paste, um, I'll go ahead and, well, I guess I don't need to DM you. I'll post in resources, the spells and, uh, their accompanying text, like what they do. Magic great. points, all that good stuff. Sounds great. And I'll actually do it this time because, uh, unlike Doctor Who, I care about you getting spells. Well, it's always good that someone cares. We still got a yeah. We got to break little Horace. Doctor Who's already broken as fuck. How? Yeah, but I'm pretty sure he has over a hundred medicine roll. Oh well, yes, that. But <sighs> when has he used it throughout this entire campaign? <laughs> I don't use that skill. We're bringing it back to the table here, you guys. Are watching a general cavorting of these cultists. They continue to supplicate themselves in front of this mummy prostrated on this altar. And as you cross through this chamber, you see that the altar is constructed of a white marble, which contrasts starkly with the black marble and the black pools of liquid that make up the surface and the floor of this chamber. From three sides, steps lead 15 feet up to where the sarcophagus of Queen Nitocris rests. Some braziers, which burn with a sickly yellow light, are built into the four corners of the altar. The crown and the necklace are on Nitocris, and you watch as one cultist, child of the Sphinx, raises up the steps, head bent in supplication, and places a golden girdle onto the waist of the mummified queen. Beyond the altar is another structure. You can see the hideous double throne is vile green sweating stone carved with numerous images of violent cruel acts performed by humans and other horrifying almost mythical looking creatures the images are disturbing but unidentifiable as you do not know what you're looking at the throne's two seats are designed for human-sized figures the hieroglyphs carved into them above them proclaim that this is the throne of Nidocris. 
the throne block stands 30 feet above the floor. To the front only, facing the hall, a set of narrow and precarious steps leads steeply down to the floor of the hall. Where are all you maneuvering in this giant crowd? Again, the edges of which disappear into black shadows. You're unsure uh, where the boundaries of this space are. You're almost afraid you'll fall over the edge and disappear into nothing. Um, did you say that, uh, what's her name? Freaking... Agatha Broodmore? Yeah, you said she's here. I want to make my way closer, but not directly near her. You make your way through the crowd, and it is folding over itself, this mass of bodies. You get bumped and swayed a little bit, but you're able to push your way through. At the front of the crowd now, you watch as Agatha Broadmoor is still kneeling in front of the sarcophagi on top of this large altar. She sits on the steps directly in front of it, cultists on either side of her, hands on her shoulders, pushing her down into the black marble. It seems like they're coercing her. They're trying to persuade her to do something. And looking around, exacerbated frustration, desperation, and then resignation, you see her move through all the emotions, and you watch her face cloud over and become placid, no longer hurt confusion and pain, but just a monotone, blank expression, almost as if she's reaching out. Did they recognize us? Are you trying to be recognized? No, I mean, <laughs> just understood. No, they did not recognize you. Sorry, I just got back. You guys, huh? creeping closer to Agatha Broudmoor and John Gardner, who are prisoners on their knees in front of this stone sarcophagi, which, ah, the stone sarcophagi, you notice, is tilted over and lays, like, on its side open. The mummy is now on top of this white stone altar. Oh, it's standing? No, it's lying down. So, can we recognize this as ritual? With all of your experiences so far with the mythos, I would say that the chanting, the worship of all these followers, as well as the mummy being placed on the altar, you would say that this Where is kind of... In addition to the powerful artifacts that have been placed on the mummy, you would indeed be able to tell that this is a ritual of resurrection. Okay. Oof. I'm gonna look at everybody. Uh, uh, where are we? How far away in did we get? Did we get anywhere close to the exit? You guys are in the mosh. Mosh. Um. Okay. Can we try to walk faster through the mob mosh and? In the meta, I guess. We could make a huge distraction. We could try blowing up, or we can just walk away. We could try to save them. Uh, we should probably. I need a yes or no. 
We should save them, right? I need Bane's approval too, not just- I can't just be the two of us. Do we save them or not? I don't know if they're able to be saved at this point, in. She's not looking too hot over there. It's not about her being hot. Not like that. I mean, like, even if we it's save her, it might be about sex. over. Oh, okay. You know, what? forget my opinion. Do what you want. I, I'm telling him that they're not anything about. I'm telling you. Uh, how about could I cast a spell and? Uh... What spell do you know? I know three spells now, I'll have you know. I, I have uh, Create Barrier, which creates a spherical barrier around the target. Um, something yes. that I don't actually have a reference for, which is the Sazatha Quas or whatever. And then uh, I could I could summon a Live Lord of Chaos. No. Well, no. No, oh. what, what, do you, what it requires the... I gotta ask, what what requires you to summon the Lord of Chaos? There's always a requirement. What's the requirement? Uh, I don't know yet. I haven't looked it up yet. Okay. Um. The the wall though might be a good idea. If you can do it without being noticed, and then summon a, a, a instead of a. Putting it around priest here. No. It's the coffin. No. How big can you make it? It can only go around one person, right? You said? As a hundred yards. It can go around a hundred yards? Yep. Oh my god, okay. Okay, I have an idea then. If we can get to the if we can rush to the, the altar. And then we put a wall around us. And oh, good idea. People, and then we can at least uh, handle the priest and take off the jewelry. Someone like handles the jewelry, like take it off the body so it doesn't resurrect. Because I'm being that's what they're trying to do. And then we try we try to kill the priest right away, and then rush to and then when the spell wears off, we rush to the exit. Is that is that every uh, uh, does that sound good? That sounds like a plan. Okay. Any other ideas? I mean, I'm 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 good with the. Uh... Just, just leaving. No, oh, no, I'm good with the, with that idea. Uh, the question is, what do we do after we do that? We killed the priest. For uh, first, we gotta make sure we kill the priest, and someone needs to concentrate on taking the jeweler off the mummy as fast as possible. Because I'm betting yeah. they're gonna they're gonna do yeah. everything they can to summon the um the the creature to be alive. And I I have a feeling that the jewelry is what actually take off the crown first, and then the the other stuff. And if you can destroy it, use a pimp. Use your. If you can't take it off, use your gun, point blank, and fire. Destroy the uh, artifact. I don't give maybe, a fuck. Maybe maybe somebody else could put the crown on. Maybe we could put it on. Nope. Like maybe Bane could try it on. No, not don't, don't it. I'm oh, just take it off. You gonna put? It, oh yeah, yeah. We we'll put it on Bane. We we'll can see what happens to him. Okay. Okay. So that's the plan. Actually, I have a better plan. It it's okay, probably it. not a safe, but are are we trying to save those two? Well, we would like to, but what's the fun? All right, so you guys have your gas mask, right? Yes. Uh, sure. Cool, yeah. All right, so those two might not survive this. You know what? Wait, wait. Uh, Which two? Oh, our people were trying to say. <laughs> well, yes, but look at this. Uh, look it's at the bigger picture. picture. Yeah. 
So not only are we killing a great deal of cultists, we're preventing the resurrection of an old deity. So I mean, I think that two two lives lost is a, it's a good trade. I, I I can't deny that. Can you use your best poison to kill them all fast and quick, so they don't die a painful death? Is there one that do you have one that's painless? Uh, yes. Probably. Probably. Either way. While that's happening, I want you guys to use the, uh, the gas that's, that I'm gonna drop down here to take the artifacts off the mummy, just in case. Mm -hmm. Alright, yeah, I think we can do that. And then, um, how about we do this? Um, while she does this, we come from both sides. So we rush from both sides just in case something happens. So at least one person gets to the mummy. And the other person acts as back up and have their gun ready. Um, does that, does that sound fair that, to the plan? Okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. So the, so all in the plan is... She releases the gas. We put in the, the gas middle. masks. Bane releases the gas. We come we... from both sides of the altar. Okay. And then we rush to the mummy and try to take the artifacts right away. And each All of us try to take as many more artifacts as possible. And if one of us is take, um, uh, and like if we, if I see someone still moving, I will either whoever's furthest away from the money, mummy, will take care of anybody that's trying to go after like the person who's closest. Okay. Did that sound okay? Work for me. All right, let's do it. Okay, let's do that. We'll do that then. That's the plan. <laughs> yeah, it seems all right. All right, Coming I think I'm a mess now. As teamwork, you guys exchange glances and nods and communicate this plan with each other as a orgy of violence and bloodletting continues around you. You notice some things in this room that you have proceeded into this dark space. As one faces, nope. In the rear of the great hall, behind the throne, is an enormous irregular hole, about 100 feet wide and 125 feet deep, evidently torn open by some vast force. This hole is pitch black, no matter how much light drifts in its direction. Noticing as you guys try and look for your separate escape route, which is in this uh, bottom, bottom left-hand corner of the map, you do see a back exit, the only other entrance into this great hall that you've seen. But your attention focuses oh. back to the right, back to the ritual. Someone have a question? Uh, no. Good, well, because... Go with it. What you see present at this ritual are 12 priests, including Omar al-Shakti and Martin Winfield. Standing next to him is Dr. Henry Clive. Oh. You Good. see them Fine. pull down their hoods, standing behind the Queen Nato Christ on top of the altar. Now. Oh, yeah, we'll keep... read... What's that? Can I use the, the vibrating radioactive bomb that I got? Hell yeah, you load up the vibrating radioactive bomb into your... Wait a minute, yeah, wait, you just have that. <laughs> Absolutely, and you get it ready, you prime it, you take off the safety, and just as you're about to throw it... A space opens up in the crowd as the rest of the Clive expedition is knelt at the front of the altar. It's good. 
All right. When I see here, throw the radioactive bomb. I'm um, jagging it. Yep. Rush. Rushing it. Yep. The Clive right. expedition will be removed. Oh, I forgot. Mm. That. It's fine. So a few things are going to happen at once here. With this flurry of movement, you guys are exciting the rest of the cultists around you, and several of them spontaneously throw themselves into these black pools of liquid. That's fine. I can, I can run on them if, if I need to, then. More violence spontaneously erupts. You watch as some of the new members, the new cultists, are violently assaulted. Some of the older club members take their cult clubs and start beating the heads in of these new members whose bodies are seized and thrown into these black pools where you hear an accompanying <laughs> sucking as you watch as these massive three foot leeches suck all the flesh and blood off of these corpses bone dry. You watch as these fat leeches are joined wiggling and crawling together, replacing the flesh and sinew of the victims and animating themselves into giant, long, leechy bodies. I'm gonna need you all to make a sanity roll. I don't have one. I don't have an insanity roll. I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at the body and, oh, oh, oh. all right, give me a second. Little horse and Doctor Who, please roll a D8, I think? A D6. For sure. You, you can't just roll a one. You can't roll a one for me. Like you guys are matching. All right, you both take five down of sanity damage. Doctor Bane, you seeing all this chaos swim around you are unfazed, continuing, you arm your bomb, where are you throwing it? Uh, in the densest area of cultists. I like that. Maximum blast radius. Yeah. Some more bullshit. Uh, give me one second, I gotta get my, uh, I gotta get my DM screen. Can we not? Can we did. Why is it all the way on the other side of the room? This is this is unacceptable. It's fate. Is fate help, you know, helping us along? Just use the core rulebook. I will need Little Horse and Doctor Who. Please roll D100s for me. Yay! Uh, it's never a good thing. Don't say yay. You don't know what he's rolling. He's not like a successor. I rolled an eight. It can't be that bad. An eight. Uh -huh. Eights are lucky. <laughs> I guess you're right. Uh, but if it's a like a whole, it could be a whole list of things. Little horse, do you have an acute fit of aluromania? Oh, it's a sanity table. Yep, that's why I said, don't be happy. What do I have again? An abnormal fondness for cats, and thinking back to your girlfriend, Neris, and how sexy she looked as a panther, you really feel like a furry? Um, yeah, you're a furry now. All right. Oh, Sounds damn, bad. that's not that bad. That's not that bad. See? Eight. <laughs> Yeah, but don't touch Cosmo, okay? He's, he's sensitive. <laughs> Doctor Who, like you can feel the leeches crawl up inside you and take over your spirit. The demon leeches inside you. Uh, start clawing at your stomach a little bit for me with scratches, trying to get the leech out. Oh, God damn it. Uh, can I, like, uh, can I... All right, I'm gonna. I imagine it, and I'm looking at. It, but I'm also a doctor, and I'm also used to. At least, uh, I know about hallucinations, and I also have done drugs before. Can I just think of this as a bad trip and calm myself, my, myself down? 
You know it's demon. a bad trip. And you I have feel, been... You do know this, and what? you can rationally uh, pull this apart. And you are sure that through the power of Satan and science, much like in Doom, when we couldn't stop getting enough energy from Mars, so we summon the demons, you have used science to possess yourself, sir. There you go. But let's okay, get back to Dr. Bane later, here. Later, I'm taking a drink. So, Little Horse, Dr. Bane, or excuse me, Little Horse and Dr. Who, you lose control of yourselves momentarily in the violence. Dr. Bane, now the only one able to keep a cool head, he does what? I'm letting the gas bomb go. In the middle of the crowd. What's the radius on the gas bomb, please? You never told me the one for the glowing radioactive vibrating thing. But normally it would be really good, though. 20 by 20 foot with 2d10. That's a regular one, but you never told me what the one for the, the extreme. Ah, uh, I see. And this is, a, by the way, this is a close chamber thing. Kind of. Right, right. Oh, no. oh, so it should linger. An 84. Pretty That's pretty high. Scratching like that, it kind of reminds me of a cat. Oh, no. Uh, no don't do it. I'm so I'm going to say uh, this thing has a 40-foot radius. Go ahead and roll. Go ahead and roll 2d10 as well as a d10. Go and roll 2d10 and then roll a d8 for me. Nice. Like that. So you and your friends reaching into your equipment and donning gas masks underneath your robes, you all hear the faint hiss as a deadly gas spreads out through the crowd at first. <coughs> you just hear coughing, wheezing, which turns into a sputtering, wheezing hack. <coughs> That's the sign, run! <laughs> Gurgling turns into spitting, hacking, and then dies down into a soft sputter. Alright, cool. I need to check really fast if anyone lived through that. <laughs> nope. You rolled a 10, that's a good roll. Good roll in that damage roll. Maximum HP of one of these cultists is 11. Uh, oh, I lied, it's 12. Doesn't matter. I lied again, it's 14. Uh, so looking at magic points. No, the health points is 14 is the highest one, so 15 damage would be enough damage to kill every single one of these people. Nice. All right. Excellent. While they're dying, I'm rushing towards the mummy. I'll rush too. I'll get a uh, mummy artifacts. Oh yeah. You guys climbing rain. up the steps, rushing up, catch the last moments of Agatha Broodmore as the white, filmy substance over her eyes clears for a moment. To reveal your appearances, she recognizes you. The 
moment of recognition crossing her expressions before her features relax. Wait, how did she recognize me? We have that one. An eruption of blackness spouts out of Agatha Broodmore, circling around the entire chamber. You're not even sure how you can see in this purplish energy leeches out of her body in torrents, up and back down into the mummy on the altar. Fuck it. I'm, I, I was like, I look at t uh, both Bane and, and um, Little Horse and point to the exit. And, and I like the, the, the fuse for the, uh, the dynamite and I toss it at the mummy. Oh God, and can I, you I run. That'd, that'd be I, cool. Yeah, I'm running and I'm running towards the exit. Fuck this. I'm not gonna pay for enough for this. I thought we were gonna grab the necklace off the mummy. It's gonna get blown up. Run, I run towards the exit. You're I'm trying not gonna fight a mummy. to get closer to the mummy's body, climbing up the steps, which are these large, enormous blocks. You're having to do the like full body uh, uh, like squat to get up these steps. And as the rushing fountain of energy pours out of Agatha and into the mummy, you are pushed back by some wind or force. Uh -oh. Can I just get back up and keep walking? Running. Run. Yeah. Where are y'all running? I'm going back up to the mummy. I, I don't think dynamite would be enough for evil forces, I suppose. I want to make oh, sure it's... I killed that big giant thing in the... At London. Was it London? A I don't know. A big giant I, snake I, thing? A bird thing? That was a snake. Same thing happens, Dr. Vane. You try and force your body to come up towards this massive... It's just a rush of energy. It's like the... When all the houses get burned by the cult in season three of Castlevania, it's a flame torrent of black energy. Fuck it. Um, summon your creature. Wait, what are you summoning? I said you summon your creature. Oh. Uh, I mean... That well, is... Well, maybe not. Actually, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. It's not working. Never mind. I'm, 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 I'm talking crazy now. Where's the dynamite at this moment? I mean, I don't think it would have reached the mummy with the force. Yeah, so is it like just something you around? Watch the dynamite tumbles a few times in the air and then Pew! flies off and dis uh, is extinguished in one of these giant pits of leeches. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Dynamite this... doesn't like, just go out that easily. Can I take That's some samples of the leeches and put them in a tube? Oh, God. <laughs> I wish you have sex with the leeches. <laughs> no. Damn. That's a go burn. I like it. Heading over to the <sighs> okay, pools, okay. you watch as these bodies and out. these... There are like these mummified bodies whose muscles have been replaced by these singular leeches. Instead of having a strand of muscles that make up a bicep, you just see one giant leech wrapped over and over around the, the bones of the arm. You see another leech that makes up the neck and the torso. I'm gonna cock the shotgun and fire. See oh, if so it can stop a bullet. Now let's figure so out what everyone's take... doing here. It sounds like Doctor Who is gonna go a little bit violent. Uh, Doctor Bane is taking some samples. Little horse, what are you doing? As you see your, yeah, uh, your fellow investigators, not insanely. Is that but uh, yeah, what are they? they're doing their own thing. What are you doing? I was running towards the mummy, but got blown away. So now I guess I'm tearing dumbly. Uh, what? Uh, I will. Fire! I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna shoot my shotgun at the at the mummy. All right. Blow off the head. Give me a bad. Go ahead and give me a well, rifle shot. Doctor Who, you shoot your shotgun and you have no effect. Do you see the uh, shell bounce off this energy? Yeah, it definitely of the, bounce off the energy. A little bit of the bandages to the mummy seem to move and indent, but they do not even break. 
Little horse, much the same thing. You shoot right through this black flame. Nothing. I'm going to take off the, the, the necklace and hold it in my hand and push forward through the energy. See if we, we can't get to the necklace. It's on the mummy and no, we no, can't. our necklace. My necklace I have on around my neck. The cultist necklace. No effect. And at this point, okay. as you guys... In a moment, you watch this. This all takes place over three, four seconds. This gout of blackness bedding itself within this mummy. You watch as the tail end of this flames arcs up out of Agatha, out of her mouth, and then down into the mummy, which screams and shrieks and then falls silent. You watch as the okay, mummy's bandages... Run. Run, run. Unravel, unwrapping themselves as she stands, revealing a beautiful woman before you. Uh, not another queen. Please, God. Is she, uh, cat shaped? She is human. Oh. Uh, uh my queen, we have come to, to, to your aid. She smirks at this, and you watch as two giant tentacles of bone and leech <laughs> squelch and writhe in front of the pile of bodies in front of you, pulpifying them, and then wringing themselves out into a golden goblet, which hands itself to Queen Needle Christ as she walks back, taking a seat in one of the two large green stone thrones. If it wasn't for us, we you would never be a, uh, here. Good. We are a loyal subject. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I like like look at the exit and I'm like I'm, I'm like gonna slowly back to the exit. Wonderful. First thing is this is like oh my queen my queen. Wonderful. I join it. I always love to be having, I love being praised as soon as I come back from my thousand year nap. Everyone bow down to me. I bow down I, quickly. I, I don't care about this woman. Can I get the leeches? Staying on point. You gotta stay for science. Need, I'm gonna need some more leech. Uh, yep, uh, go ahead and give me a biology roll for the leeches. I'll also accept a mythos roll. I have not had those two Oh, wow. With that roll, um, with that terrible roll, but your high biology <laughs> skill, you, you would realize that these role. leeches have no earthly origin. That they are a part of no genus. They have no organ system which you can identify. Oh, yeah. That is how, are there smaller leeches that I can actually take, or are they all big? They're all these giant, fat, three-foot monstrosities, and you try and, like, grab one and, and, like, pull it out of the pit, and it's attached to, like, this knee elbow. Can I... Okay. Uh, what's the word? In, in latent terms, can I knock out the leech? I don't think it's human. I mean, it's like of this world. Give uh, me a maybe? brawl. Uh, go ahead and give me a brawl roll as you try and like, is this the right end? Nope, the other end. Uh, brawl. Oh. You're gonna put your hands in it? Ah, uh, there crazy it is. girl. You crazy? I am punching a leech. Holy shit, nice. Kill it. That's yeah, you knock the it. Yeah, you bash this leech in the the <laughs> the leech <laughs> in the face and you watch it go. <laughs> get knocked out and it relaxes, but it's so tangled inside of this rib cage that it's in that you can't like pull it out without damaging I'll, it. Rib cage. No, I'll break the rib cage. All right, yeah, you force it through and you cut the leech in half on accident and it dissipates into a slime. 
Can I just grab another leech that isn't tangled up on something? Yep, that's a look. Yeah, they're not filming that one out too. Let's come back to who the hell is that? Some bitch. Dark God, fucking mute yourself, for Christ's sake. Sorry, I was uh, putting the. Uh... Is it better now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that a silver, yep, alert? Yep. silver alert? Oh, what? Oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, my battery's falling. Uh, went low. Are you sure an APB didn't get put out on your license plate because you stole that kid earlier today? Oh, I don't. I didn't think so. Well, don't go rat them out. Well, yeah, I've already yeah, moved the child I, through I, I my the, the, the orphans, you know, so they don't have anybody to. Uh, you know, you never take the ones that have families. <laughs> who is discussing, uh, I believe, Little Horse and Doctor Who are trying to have a conversation with Queen Needle Christ, correct? Uh, yeah. yeah. Like, really? hey, Queen, like, we're here to help you. Do you need, like, any assistance? Do you uh, want some ju uh, some wine, some uh, wine? Can I? A uh, grape, world, uh, bag, perhaps. Yeah. You know, uh, some uh, a, a liquor, you know. Uh, how about some uh, drugs? We have I have drugs. Silence. But... I always appreciate more worshippers to gaze and marvel at my beauty. Bow down and praise me for what your worthless, pitiful lives are. Go ahead and give me yeah. a persuasion. I'll accept persuasion. Uh, I don't know. Charm or intimidate? Uh, hey, hey, it's, it's, it's Bane's time, baby. Bane, do the intimidation. You guys. Oh, fuck you. Oh, oh my they... god. Oh my god, Tom, baby. You did it, baby. You did it. Perfect. I'm proud of you. First has a way with, with the ladies, you know. Yeah, I know, I know, totally. You were, you were the man. And then they, they left it, my then they, the charm is it a 15. Wow. Blade yeah. is a 10. Is it, can I? Uh, nice can pull, I little horse. That yeah. was a clutch. So as Can you supplicate, as you supplicate yourself, a little Horst, in front of your new queen, what do you say to gain her favor? Um, this is never, never what works. Come on, you can uh, use, use your charm. Uh, uh, I love it, queen. Uh, she just kind of stammers. And is like, wow, you really are kind of beautiful. Not very cat-like, but very beautiful. She can hear the disappointment in your voice as you say, not very cat-like. <laughs> what a charmer. What a charmer. And? Oh, but actually, that might actually work, because, uh... Oh. She'll turn into a like, turn into a cat probably. mummy. Maybe. Saying. You watch her curl her lips, almost unconvinced. She reaches up into the air and pulling something down. You hear a crack in the air. Something broke. And then walking from nowhere in particular, you hear footsteps. And you watch as a man with gray skin walk up and take a seat next to Queen Needlegrass. Where the fuck did you come from? My king! Uh, Bro, fuck this. The king! Oh, is there anything still there? You look beautiful. I just want a leech. Cat like. Can we just leave, please? I want. To... No, I, I, I don't want to be here. Anymore. Uh, is you feel uneasy. The presence of this new person isn't like anything you felt before. That is no person queen. at all. Uh, my queen. Is this your king?
Your question goes unanswered, bouncing and echoing off the empty halls. The only thing that is audible for a moment is the wet stirring of the leech pools as more bodies are pulled within the black waters. Yeah, we kind of killed them, so it's fine. Um, you, you, you can have all yeah. been disturbing my plans for long no, enough. No, we haven't. We helped you. You can't say that to us. We're your fellow. We're it is first. Carlisle's yeah. destiny to bring me into this world, so I might Ooh. show humanity new ways to writhe in ecstasy in a holocaust of violence. I think uh, you're you're we pretty, we did a pretty good job at that. Right? I don't know. And that doesn't sound, sound so bad. bad. Yeah, totally. I mean, can we can we help you with that? Uh, we'll just we'll, we'll just go and get like some can worship. I be your high priest. No, 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 no. wait, wait. We need to go get the worship stuff. So we should oh, just yeah. we we should go get the worship stuff right now. Let's just go get it. Yeah, yeah. It we yeah, can't do yeah. this. We're not gonna do this right without the worship stuff. Yeah, totally. We need to, we need to get the that, that thing, the Perfect chains, the, the 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 sacrificial knife. Huh. Great. I'm running. I'm, I'm done. I'm done acting. I'm running through the exit. As Doctor I, Who, you I'm turn to go. I'm not running. But what is he running for? I don't understand. I need to hurry up and get that stuff. Oh, yes. Go get the worship stuff. Needle cries. Regally looking beautiful in her newly resurrected body stands and rises up looking at you, you little horse. Your fate has already been determined, and those of you who will see our grand plan to fruition will be allowed to live. However, those of you with deception in your heart will die right here. <laughs> Just gonna be poking a stick at the leech pool. <laughs> Dr. Bane, you look at the leech pool and see the giant T Rex tremors through the entire water. Unimportant. The leech is priority. Focused in on that leech, you poke down into it, and the place where you poked, the ripples circularly expand out across the entire pool. <laughs> Little Horst, you look towards the hole in the room, the blackness of the black marble which absorbed all light. Rising up, a hideous head, somewhat in the shape of a lion, but with many faces on it. I'm scared, man. The faceless god, the beast. The Black Sphinx has been known by many names and is huge. Its face has wrinkles, eyeless forehead, and a myriad of maws placed asymmetrically in ovals all over its face. With its two animated looking. forepaws, know that. it alternates scooping up sacrifices of the dead on the floor, mouths drooling, blood and bones crunching all over as it lifts the sacrifices high into its fang grim maws, dropping some still living, terrified humans into its mouths of mocking, leering, infinite evil. I, do, I want you to remember, I'm not looking. Okay. Sounds pretty terrible. Rising up from this hole out into your chamber, you look down into the hole and see endless armies of sphinxes stretching out in a symmetrical pattern as if it is a fractal of repeating sphinxes. Uh, are, is our campaign going to be about us always like fucking up the world or something? What? Um, uh, nothing. I just... It's, um, the dynamite. Is, is there... is the dynamite gonna do? 
Okay, Dynamite yeah, okay. is in the leech pit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not what I mean. Is so Bane should, should be able to have it? dynamite. Yeah, What's he doing? It. Trying to grab the leech. Dynamite yeah, drifts by as she grabs that the leech again. God dang it, man. That's where we're gonna end it for the night. Thanks for playing, guys. For real though, I mean, I'm gonna say, like, are we. Are we the, the reason this world's gonna die? I'm just. Like, I'm pretty sure we have, like, two big uh, Goliath worms in this world because of us. And then. That's fine. That's fine. Doles are fine. They only. Eat... No, that, that's fine. Don't worry about releasing doles into the world. Yeah. Yeah. Road eater. Road eater. Yep, we had two of them. Oh, no, one of them. Nonetheless, we, we did release it into the world. That was a blast campaign. Come on, man. I mean, in fairness, there yeah, are... Yeah, come back to honest in the end. Never. There are multiple world-ending threats in this campaign, and Queen Needlecrise is indeed one of them, separated from the main arc. Oh. Uh, so we don't have to worry about it. We just let her rule the world. Maybe what we can do is open all of them and have them do, like, an all-out fight. It's like you in The Simpsons. What? The Tell Three Stooges. Like the Three Stooges sy uh, syndrome in The Simpsons, where all the diseases are trying to kill Mr. Burns, but they can't kill him because they're trying to get through the door at once and they get stuck. Yeah. All right, little horse. I give approval if you want to send me your chaos creature next game. Sounds good. I'm going to do that. That seems like a plan. How many can you summon at one? I have no idea because I haven't looked, figured out which spell it is yet. I'll look it up after. When you find out how many, if you can summon multiple ones, that'd be great. Because I feel like you need an army. Oh, this is my night. And I don't think Bane's gonna have us. Dr. Bay, that the reason I wasn't allowing you to take one of these leeches is because they're not leeches. They're um, a Cthulhu entity known as the Million Favored Ones, who are... They are cultists who were killed by Merlothotep, but continue to exist in a tortured half-state where they are... They're just loyal supplicants. They're just... They're just, they know who to praise, and they're praising the crawling chaos, and damn it, if we're not gonna spend eternity praising the crawling chaos forever and ever. I still want a leech. It's not a leech, it's a, it's like an actual Cthulhu mo monster with a stat block. I don't care, I want it. I want it! It has physical form, yeah. though. Well, uh, it, uh, it's a uh, amorphous, uh, variable, more physical form, yes? So what's keeping you from picking it up and taking it home? Because it's amorphous, uh, it keeps falling it down. So if I just put it in a bag, it, it's, it's fine. It's a five-gallon bag, yeah. duct tape it up, it's coming home. Yeah. If you can get well, home. If you take more than once, it's not lonely or something? Go breed him at that point. Turn some money Ooh. off of this. Wait, I thought you said a cultist. How are they going to breed them? And they're not actual worms or stuff, so they don't have the organs of said breeding. Do you know how million favored ones reproduce sexually? I don't think they do. I think they just pull in the dead souls of a lot of people. So they can suffer with them. It's probably right, actually. If I have to be like this, you have to be like this. Alright, as we figure out the etymology and the source of the million favored ones, that's what we're going to call it this week. But, as always, thank you very much for playing. Over? Yeah. We, we finally work at work together to do something, and you cause it to be a horrible nightmare. 
Yes. Great way to build teamwork, man. <laughs>